Hello everyone, happy 2022! One goal for me this year is to build a game in Swift UI and show the progress to you. My idea includes dragging objects from one place to another, but before that, I would like to explore the fundamentals of gestures in Swift UI. Today, we will focus on drag gesture events. My name is Pete, and this, this is Swift and Tips. Okay, let me explain you what is a gesture. A gesture is simple, an event produced by a touch interaction in the screen. There are multiple types of gestures in iOS, but right now Swift UI only supports tab gesture, long press gesture, magnification gesture, rotation gesture, and drag gesture. In this video, we will cover drag gesture in detail. The base of any Swift UI gesture is provided by gesture protocol. If you look closely, this looks like a view protocol with a body property. That's true. And creating a gesture is pretty similar to building views in Swift UI. You will see that in a moment. All right, let's focus then on drag gesture. But let's do it, why not, on Swift Playground from iPad. We have this circle object in the screen and by default it's static. You cannot drag it or anything. Let's change that and add a drag gesture. Let's use gesture modifier and pass a drag gesture object. Well, nothing is happening. That's because we need to add event handlers for our gestures. Those handlers will report the state of the gesture. There are three main handlers in form of modifiers for gestures. Let's see first updating. Updating is a modifier that will report the current gesture state at a particular time. In the case of drag gesture, we want to get the location of the view after the dragging. Updating has two parameters, a gesture state and a closure with full details of the progress. You can create a gesture state using the special property wrapper gesture state. Let's create a new one to save the current location. Let's keep that coordinate as the default state. Now let's add updating modifier to drag gesture and use a binding object to pass location state. Here, you will find that updating closure has three parameters. The current state with the latest changes, the past gesture state right before the latest update. This is actually the reference to your own gesture state created earlier. And a transaction object containing the context of the gesture. For example, animation info is provided here. Now, even with updating modifier invoked, we still cannot move the object. It's time to use updating's closure to make the location state update. Let's update past location parameter using current state dot location. And voila, we can finally drag and move the object around the screen. By the way, we can update or pass location parameter because it's an in out parameter that provides the same reference from our original object. We want to talk more about in-out in a coming video. We can also change the drag animation using transaction, that is also an in-out parameter. Let's use transaction.animation equal to is in-out. You may notice a smoother effect when we move the object. You may also notice that once I release the object, it goes to the default location. This is expected. Updating modifier will handle your gesture state, but once the gesture ends, it will reset everything back to the original state. If you want to persist the last location in memory, then we need to use another modifier called onChange. Unchange is easier to use than updating. The only parameter is a closure providing the latest gesture state. This time, we don't require to set up a gesture state. Just a regular state property is enough to save the progress. Look that now the latest location is persisted in the screen.
Now, if we need to go back to the default location, we can control that manually. Let's use the third event, on ended. We will receive the same parameter like unchanged, the latest gesture state. For this case, we don't need it, but we need to restore to the default state. Let's assign that to the location state. You can see that using unchanged and unended in this way, we got the same result like updating. Depending on what you need to build, you can use any of those alternatives. In my opinion, unchanged and unended require a more manual work, but you got more flexibility. In fact, instead of returning to the default location in one frame, let's apply an animation to transition to the original state. We just need to use with animation function to wrap what is in unended closure. Now the transition to the default state is smoother, and later you can customize the animation even more. Lastly, I would like to talk about drag gesture parameters. It has two, minimum distance and coordinate space. Minimum distance is the number of points away you need to move the object before triggering the event. Let's set minimum distance to 200. You might notice that dragging started but the object is still static until we reach the minimum distance of 200 points. Now, let's talk about coordinate space. You might remember the video we made about Geometry Reader to build the Apple Watch layout. In that video, we talked that basically there are two types of coordinates, local and global coordinates. Local are relative to the parent view and global relative to the whole screen. Well, here we can define the type of coordinates of gesture will react to. By default, drag gesture works with local coordinates. In fact, with this little demo, you might not see the difference between global and local. Let's add a B stack with another view on top. First off, you will see that the fall position is related to the pstack container. Now, let's use global coordinates instead. The default location is still relative to the container, but now with global coordinates, we are getting an extra offset. Guess how much? It's the same height of green view. This is happening because location variable is saving absolute coordinates. So if you are render it relative to the container and gesture responds to global coordinates. This might bring you issues if you don't pay attention to the coordinate space. Again, the default value is local. But if for some reason you need to modify this, keep all this in mind. As you can see, with just a few lines of code, we can make an object draggable across the screen. With all that info, let's build now our little game with draggable objects. But let's do it in the next video. By the way, would you like to see a video about Swift Playground? Let me know in the comments if you are interested about it. And if you want to learn more about Swift UI, I will leave you a playlist in front of your screen. That is really cool. That's all for me, everyone. Thank you very much and have a great day.